to James' video, uh, What is an Extremist? And this video was a question for me regarding my video titled, To All Atheists. James, I don't mean to berate you about some of this stuff, but frankly, and I hope this wasn't the case, it seemed as though you were using this video to sort of slip in a little bit of anti-Islamic insinuation and rhetoric. Like I said, I hope I'm wrong about that, but I was a little... No, um, I brought up Islam because um, every time, almost every time I've debated atheists um, on my faith, they bring up Islam and say, well, look, this is what religion can do at its worst. This is what um, extremists do, and they put extremism uh, in the same category, or, or, or extremist, extreme Islam with extremist Christianity, and say that basically if we follow Christianity in the same way, we'll be just as violent and hateful as they are, who, who do these acts by following Islam. But I was showing you from that video that that's totally not true. And to say that a Christian extremist um, is evil or wrong, that's misunderstanding terms. And I think here terms are very important. Um, so, yeah, and I, I am anti-Islam. Uh, very much so. Um, I don't hate Muslims, though. I care deeply for them to come to the truth. I believe that they are brainwashed and... Uh, a victim of a satanic attack on this world um, that they have to fight by the sword simply to defend the lies of Muhammad and defend his filthiness um, according to five um, five verse 65 of the Quran uh, sorry four verse 65 it is teaching you how to divorce a little girl who hasn't had her period yet. And by the example of Muhammad marrying Aisha at the age of six, molesting her from six to nine, and then consummating the marriage at nine, uh, I see big problems with this. Um, Christ said that anybody who takes the innocence of these little ones, it would be better for him to have a milestone tied around his neck and tossed into the ocean. So according to my beliefs and what Jesus said, it would be better if Muhammad wasn't even born. And looking at the life of Muhammad, I would have to agree with him that, that Islam has caused only problems in this world and nothing good. And even the little good that it has come out of, um, we'll say an atheist could do it ten times better confused by it because I didn't say anything about Islam in the video you responded to, and I didn't say much about Christianity either. I was addressing people who have to deal with being pressured to believe and behave as others think that they should, and I was addressing this primarily to Americans, so I suppose in some sense I was talking about Christianity, or at least Christian people who think that non-belief is an immoral act and that non-believers are immoral people, even in a passive-aggressive sense. In any case, I'll get to your comments on Islam at the end, and I'll try to go over your points one by one. Uh, first, what is an extremist? Well, you gave an answer of sorts in your response, and it went something to the effect of, an extremist is someone who doesn't follow the leader of their faith or doctrine that they adhere to. I don't think that's the most accurate definition of extremism, but I certainly agree with you that the kinds of Christian people who are the target of my last video aren't following Christianity as it was meant to be followed. No, actually, um, you misunderstood me there. I said that when calling a Christian who does, somebody who claims to be Christian and does an, an evil act, an extremist, is not looking at what an extremist is. I believe that an extremist is one who follows the leader of a p particular religion to what he taught. Um, so the extremist Muslims, who are part of Al Qaeda and um, and the Taliban and um, um, the um, Hamas and these different groups, are actually following 
the examples of Muhammad and the hadiths and the tafsirs and the Quran. Um, as an example, when we saw uh, in the news, I don't know if you saw it or not, you can check it out on YouTube, was a Taliban, they came in with guns and everything and they stopped a Muslim wedding because they were playing music. Now we look at that and we say, oh, um, uh, that's that's wrong for them to do that. Even Muslims will look at that and say that it's wrong. But Muhammad specifically said that music is haram, meaning it's it's against Islam, and that they will be turned into apes and pigs for listening to music, uh, which we laugh at because it's so stupid. And um, you can go and you can find the sources for this. And so they're actually following what he taught. The Muslims here in the West who are listening to music, who really don't care, are not the followers of Islam and shouldn't be the ones that we look to as an example. Should be the ones that are following what the doctrine teaches. But anyways, I don't even support looking to followers to figure out what a religion teaches. I support going to the sources. Um, because anybody can say anything. But it's the proofs and references that matter. The, for lack of a better word, neo or pop Christian movements that we see today, particularly in the United States, uh, as well as what we're seeing in the Islamic world, are not religious movements. They're social and political movements. Uh, there are religious doctrines and edicts tacked onto them, but they have nothing to do with one's relationship with God or with their spiritual life. They have to do, essentially, with the state. In any case, I would say that one example of an extremist is a person or group of people who, whether they're following their leader or not, would justify actions to themselves that they are at the same time trying to prevent. Uh, for example, the killing of X amount of people to save Y amount of people, or the suspension of peace and liberty in order to preserve peace and liberty. Uh, Timothy McVeigh springs to mind, as well as people who kill abortion doctors, blow up butcher shops, etc. Another example of an extremist, in my view anyway, is someone who adheres to the letter of a prescriptive document rather than the spirit or context. To address some of the comments you made about Islam, you quoted a particular passage from the Quran, and here we have something in common. I've also read the Quran, and I've done my best to study the history of the faith, and I wouldn't even try to address the passage you quoted, and nor would I try to quote some of the more congenial, peaceful passages that I know of in the Quran. Well, here's the thing. Chapter 9 of the Quran particularly verse 29 abrogated all the peaceful verses that are in the Quran and um, uh, the Quran talks about the law of abrogation uh, basically how it was is when Muhammad started out he was pretty peaceful and um, he um, he didn't have an army he didn't have power but then when uh, the Jewish people and the Christian people rejected him because he wasn't uh, a prophet um, by the standards of the Bible for a prophet, um, he started siding with the pagans, um, even to the point of kissing the Kaaba stone. And then um, he rallied them up, and he rallied his own people as well. And then he started fighting for God by the sword. Um, and so the peaceful verses don't count for the Muslims who really follow Islam to what it actually teaches. It doesn't count for them. Those verses have been abrogated. Um, and you're not alone in misunderstanding the Quran because it, according to chapter 3 verse 7 only Allah knows the Quran, Muhammad and the scholars. And all the scholars agree on one thing. They agree to disagree with it. Um, that, that this Quran is so stupid because Muhammad couldn't read or write his uncle gave him the Quran, um, and then when he died, Muhammad wanted to c commit suicide because he was no he he would be exposed as a false prophet. And um, but then he started making up some of his own, and this you you can really see the difference in the writing with that. Uh, but nonetheless. It jumps all over the place. One passage is talking about Moses, another Jesus, then another about himself, 
and it just jumps all over, which is why you need the hadiths to properly understand the Quran. But the problem is that the hadiths have so much filth in them, approving so many evil and horrific, disgusting things, that not even Muslims are accepting them anymore. For 1300 years, they were the greatest books. Now they've become garbage because they are garbage. But the Quran doesn't stand on its own. Not even one of the five pillars of Islam, which is to do Hajj, is in the Quran. The Quran doesn't even teach you how to pray the way Muslims pray. You need the Hadiths. It's empty on its own.